As you recall in the first training video on themes, which by the way you want to watch it if you haven't, because if not, this isn't going to make sense, the definition is that a theme is a combination of complementary fonts, colors, and effects. And I'm not talking about the previous training video on themes in conjunction with stationary. That's a different feature. That one you're limited because they're pre-built templates, and when it came to customization, you only had three checkboxes. So that's different. But you can use those if you'd like. I'm talking about the first training video, and if you watched it, then let's go ahead and get going here. Click in the body of the message, and come up here, click on the Options tab, and you got the Themes group, as we talked about in the first Themes training video, how you can apply themes, and it's a combination, the theme here, of colors, fonts, and effects, and the background page color. The purpose of this training video is to show you how you can change certain theme elements, well, just colors and fonts, because you can't customize or change the effects or the page color. And so if you don't like the colors that are available here in the drop-down list, then, well, you can go ahead and customize it. But before I do that, let me type in the body of the message here some text and change the font size to something large. So I've got something to show you to work with when I start customizing my colors and fonts. And for colors, well, let me go ahead and insert a illustrations to chart. And I'll just go with this one and click OK. And then close out of that. And then when it comes to the layout options, which I go over in great detail in my Microsoft Word training video, click on it. Layout options. Because I don't want it to be in line with the text, I'd rather have it like in front of the text that allows me to click and drag and float it around because it could be in front of the text. Doesn't matter where it's at. My chart's now a floaty here. In any case, it allows me to move it out and away from my text. So let's go back to our options here. And the first thing I want to do is to customize the colors. Click on the drop down arrow and you can see all the different color accents here that when I hover over one it applies to any smart art shapes, objects, or charts as you can see here. Now it's in grayscale, but if I don't like any of this, I can come down here and customize and customize the colors. And what you're looking at is two sections, the theme and the sample. And in the sample you've got two samples. You have white text or light text against a dark background and dark text against a light background. So when you're working with a dark background, do you want to go with white text? If not, then go ahead and click, well, these first four boxes are for that. The dark text against a light background and light text against a dark background. So for the black one here, you can see it's the black text. When you change it to another color, make sure it's something dark. Because if it's too light against a light background, well, you understand you won't be able to see it. So let's go ahead and go with, uh, what's that, blue? Uh, okay, that's okay. And then with the white here, that's white text against dark background, click on it and maybe choose something like gold accent for lighter 60%. Click on it. Uh, that's okay. And then for the dark background, if you don't like the color there, click on it and choose something else. Maybe I'll go with blue accent 5 darker. Well, the hyperlink is hard to see, so maybe I can go ahead and change that to do something else. Let's do orange accent 2 darker 50%. Huh, not getting any better, but I'm not going to sit here and play with colors until I get it right. You get the idea. And then for the light background, if you don't like the gray here, you want something else, we can do, well, let's do a light green here. Cool. Now when it comes to the accent colors, when you have a column chart, you can see the first color is going to be blue, then it goes orange, then it goes gray. If you want the first color to be something else, I don't know, let's see, purple followed hyperlink. Well, in any case, there's the purple. And then it goes to gray. Well, I don't like gray. I'd rather have a color. Let's do dark green. Oh, that looks nice. And you can see what it looks like against a dark background and a light background. But you don't get a choice to choose what goes against a dark background and a light background here. Because for your accents, it's all the same as well as your hyperlinks. So for the hyperlink, before you click on it, it's going to be in blue. After you click on it to show that you've been there, that you've already clicked on it, that you followed it, and it's purple, and if that doesn't work, then let's go ahead and choose something else. How about green? Oh, this isn't my best video on complementary colors here. I'm going to come back up here, because I'm just going to go to something else here entirely. Okay, I think I can live with that, except the hyperlink blue, not quite there with it. And go to more of a gold accent color. All right. If you don't like it, you can go ahead and click Reset, and it goes back to the way it was before you started making all the changes, but I'll go with it, and it will be something spiffy. That's the name of it. Click Save, and it automatically applies to the chart here.
Now if you want to go back and make edits to it or even delete it and then come back up here, click on colors. Hey, there it is, Spiffy. It's in the custom section. You can right click on it to edit it, make your changes, or of course you can right click on it to delete it. Now what about fonts? So you've got your fonts here we talked about in that first training video. You have the uppercase A, which represents the heading styles or any heading styles applied to the text, which is going to be, well, sometimes it's going to be in different font. Uh, for this one, it's the same font, but it's just a larger font size. But if you scroll down far enough, I'm sure we'll find one. There we go. Calibri is for your heading fonts with the heading style applied to it. And then Cambria is the body of the message, anything that doesn't have a heading style applied to it. And if you want to learn more about heading styles, how to apply them, and the benefits behind them, I go over it in extremely great detail in my word training video on styles. So we'll keep it simple here. If I choose Calibri, Cambria is going to be selected for the style here because that's not a heading style. Select it, and there you go. Now we already talked about how to apply this, and the reason why it's not being applied to this text. What is this in? Let's come up here, click on the Message tab, and click on the Font drop-down arrow, and you can see Arial is highlighted. It's not a theme font. If it was, it would be in Cambria, which has body. And so, if I want to be able to update this as a theme font, when I select from you know the Options tab, the theme fonts, to be updated there in a single click, then I have to choose it here. Once I choose it there, anytime I make any changes to it, on the Options tab and click Fonts and choose something else. You can see, see right there over to the right how it updates when I hover. There you go. So what I'm trying to say here is that basically if you want to use theme fonts, you can't use regular font. In other words, if you've got tons of text throughout the body of the message and you want to update it in a single click to a different font and any headings that you have with heading styles, just come up here, choose what you like, click, and it updates everything. You don't have to select the text and then come up here on the message tab and click on the drop down arrow and choose, a, well, a non theme font. But you could, it's just that once you do that, it, theme fonts become obsolete because it's no longer updatable because it's not, well, again, a theme font doesn't have body. And to show you, let me go ahead and type in this is your heading. And the heading here, when I select it and I right click on it, it's got body, but then I want to change it to a heading style, and that's Cambria. So when I come back here and I go to Options, and I want to update to a different theme font, it updates everything, or just the two words that I have within my document. There's for the heading Garamount, because I applied the heading style to it, the theme heading style Garamount, and then there's the body of the message Garamount. In any case, if you don't like that, you can go ahead and come down and customize the fonts and say, look, for the heading, and there's the sample, I want something that's comical, like Comic Sans. Let's go ahead and hit the Tab key, and it updates it here. And then for Cambria, I don't know. Well, let's do this. How about Mono Type Corsiva? Fancy Pants Text. And then let's go ahead and save it as my Spiffy theme. Click Save, and it updates it. So there's any text that I have within the body of my message that's a heading. It's got one style, and then the body of the font has got the Mono Type Corsiva. Of course, that's not matching. It's not a what you would call complementary fonts. But hey, it's not going to restrict you and say you can't go with what they think is a complementary font. You can go as outlandish as you want and choose anything that you want. And of course, if you want to change that, click on the drop down arrow and there's custom. You can right click on it to edit and also right click on it to delete it. And then you got your effects when it comes to well, milk glass. Let me come down here. So when it comes to objects and shapes, and it doesn't look like it's really applying to my chart, if at all, glossy, no, I don't have the type of chart that's 3D that's really going to smooth it out and show something fancy. How about page color? Well, you can choose something like this. In any case, once you choose all your colors, fonts, effects, if any, and page color, and you can see that you can't customize the effects, there's no option to customize or for page color. Well, when I say customize, to actually make your own color, you got to choose from the palette there. Then, if you want to be able to save this for future email messages, this theme, the combination that you can apply in a single click, and then come up here, click on themes, and go down to save current theme. And this will be my spiffy theme, and click save. So when I close out, and 
days later, I'm like, okay, time to create a new email. Double click. And I type in some text. Now, the default text that I've got set up is always going to be an Arial because that's how I set it up in the options. You know, backstage, file to options. Well, okay, file. Down to options. And go to stationery and fonts. I mean, we've talked about this. When you're creating new email messages, click on font. I chose Arial. I didn't go with the body. And the body is a code that allows you to use theme fonts that, well, by default is going to be Calibri. And so again, if you don't like Calibri, that's okay. If you want to stick with theme fonts, then you have to go to the options tab. Otherwise, if you stay on the main home tab or the message tab and you change your font and you choose some other font that isn't a theme font, well, your themes for fonts become obsolete. You can't use it. You won't be able to update it. So any case, that's why it's not going to work for me because mine was set to Arial. Unless, of course, I want to change it on the fly and go, okay, fine, I'll use theme fonts. With it selected, come up here and say, okay, I'll stick with Calibri. There you go. And then, you know, insert some objects, shapes, smart art, charts, and then go ahead and come up here, click on the options tab. And your theme font, is it there? Click on it. It's right there. It's spiffy. And you can see when I click on it, it updates it. Oh, that's so tiny. I can't see it. Let's increase the font size. There you go. Monotype Corsova. And then, of course, you can click on the drop down arrow, right click on it, and delete it. And if you want to overwrite it because you want to change it and go, hmm, for this theme, I don't want to use spiffy. I'd rather just use Office. Everything else is the same. I haven't changed it. And click on the drop down arrow to save it. And then there's my spiffy theme. Double click to overwrite it. It says you want to replace it. Yes. So the only thing that's not part of it from the original was my spiffy here. You can see now it's office. And then of course you can click on the drop down arrow. If you don't want it anymore, you can delete it and it's gone. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.